Hello to everyone watching at home, wherever you are. Uh, virtual hugs for everybody. We miss you so much, but we're here together this morning to worship the God who never changes, the God whose love for us is going to be with us through this season and is going to carry us through. So we're going to lift our praises up to him and say hello to everyone at home there and give everyone our love. Let me pray and then we're going to worship together. God, I thank you for drawing us into your presence. I thank you that in all things you are good and powerful. And we ask for your healing over all of us. And I pray that this time together will be transformational. I pray for Pastor Dean as he shares from your word. And I pray that we would be, feel the closeness of uh, us being brothers and sisters together, even though we're not in the same room. And we ask for your blessing and your healing over everyone who's feeling anxious or discouraged today. Just rain down on us with your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
join us at home to worship with us. And as we continue in worship, I just want to invite you to just take a step away from the craziness that's surrounding us. Take a step away from the news and the news that can just get us worried and worked up. And focus into a God who loves us. Focus into a God who brings us peace, who brings us love, who brings us comfort in these crazy times.
Good morning, church family. Oh, boy. Okay, can I need to be completely honest with everybody who's out there. Um, this is difficult for me. I don't think I've had as much anxiety preparing or being ready to, to share a message of hope which is the antithesis of experiencing the anxiety that I have right now, because this is new to me. I, I, I thrive off the energy of, of the church family and those who are here, so I'm trying to envision everyone who is sitting out there, instead of sitting out in the chairs, you are all sitting at home. But here's the beauty. Some of you are sitting at home in your pajamas. Some of you are laying in bed. Some of you are sitting there on your chair eating something. Well, that's not different than what the sanctuary looks like. When, on a Sunday morning when we're eating breakfast here in the sanctuary and drinking a cup of coffee. But it's a little bit different in your setting and your understanding. But I realize that as things change, some things remain the same. So I woke up this morning ready to prepare to come. And I, I, I took a shower. I put deodorant on. And then I started to put some uh, perf, uh, cologne on. And I realized I don't need to put cologne on. There'll be nobody there, which was an interesting thing for me. But what I realized is... Even though things have changed, some things remain the same. And what remained the same is I still couldn't find my wallet, nor my keys, nor my notes, nor my Bible before I left this morning. So in the midst of the change, there are certain things about me that have not changed. And we can say the same thing about Jesus. In the midst of the, of the change, which will be a radical change, something that we have never known before. Even after we get through this, and trust me, we will get through this, because if you trust in Jesus, we will all come through it, transform with more hope, with more resilience, with more power, and with more of his overwhelming presence and love, because we have an opportunity today, tomorrow, and for the remainder of the time in which we are quarantined, the remainder of the time in which we feel secluded, we have a chance to enter into the Holy of Holies, into the beauty of who Jesus is. And in entering in, he will wipe away your fears. He will allow you to experience his perfect peace. You will know the hope, not the optimistic hope, not the hope in which you believe in something, not, not a fairy tale hope, but a hope in a person. You see, when Jesus came and he died on that cross, what he was giving each and every one of us was the opportunity that in times of tribulations, in times of storms, that we might anchor in him. And that's where we're at right now. We are anchoring in him. So as the world comes at you, Here's a couple of inspirational words from Rocky himself. And we're going to try something a little bit unique here. It's going to be posted to the Facebook page. So I'm going to ask you to just scroll down, move off the live feed for a moment, play the video in the comfort of your home, and then come back to the live feed. Are we ready to do this? This is something new, something different. Hopefully it'll go well. If not, then you'll sit there for two minutes while everybody else is listening. So, And then I'll just come back and reiterate. I'm sorry, we're doing the best we can here. Are we good, Ariel? We're good? It is on the Facebook page right now. So if you will stro scroll to it and listen to it, and if you got it, just put a, a, a little blurb that says, got it, got it, got it, so I know that it's working. And then I'm going to ask my video production team here whether, okay, they got thumbs up. Everybody is good. So listen to the video. We good? Two minutes.
No. Come back. No. Yeah, come back to me. Are we back live to me? So for those of you who didn't have an opportunity, this is, this is what he, he shares partially in that, in that thing. When things get hard, you start looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The worlds aren't all sunshine and rainbow. It is a very mean and nasty place at times. And I don't care how tough you are, we'll beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. you got to hit as hard as life. It isn't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much can you take and keep moving forward? That's how winning is done. And understand something. You are more than conquerors. You are victorious in Jesus. And we don't do it alone. We do it by anchoring our hope and our life and our love on the one who has already torn the veil. And the veil is an understanding in the Jewish culture. That which separated the holy of holies from his people. So the holy and the common, when that veil was cut... What ended up happening is not so much that the common got to go into the holy, but that the holy was then spread throughout his people and his indwelling spirit now lives in us and we can anchor to his love for us. And in that anchor, he can utilize the greatness of who he is in us for a time such as this. In Hebrews chapter 6, it says this. Men swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. Listen, people, this is it. This is the point. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So here's the thing. The understanding of an anchor does something. First, it goes deep. And in the deepness, it holds us firm. Be still and know that I am God. He's not surprised by this. He's been holding us in the palm of his hand. And he desires for us to then go and tell others that during this time of anxiety, that which we could have never imagined, let us not fixate our minds and our spirit on the things that we worry about. Let us fixate our things, our mind on Jesus, who is our hope, on things that are true and pure and trustworthy. His promises, His love for us. If we are able to do that, as we weather this storm, it becomes even more so. You see, there's an old term in in, in sailing, and it's called kedging. And kedging is interesting because it's different than putting the anchor down and just holding yourself there. And I believe that this scripture talks more to this. It's when a ship is in the midst of a storm, and and it's not doing so well, but it needs to get somewhere. So what they would do is they would send out sailors with what they called the kedge anchor. And they would sail to the place in which the ship desired to go, but couldn't get to without the help of the anchor. So they take this kedge and they would would go far away and then they would plant the kedge to the bottom. And then the winch, that's the thing that would drive the boat to the anchor. Now they had to do it in their own strength. The beauty is we don't. Jesus is that kedge winch. That catch anchor. He is the one that has gone before us. And what he's saying is hold fast to the hope that is in him. Hold fast to who he is. And allow for the winch which is his spirit and his love to draw us to the catch anchor. So that in him as he draws us into his presence we will take this time of reset. Now I understand for some of us it's a reset moment. For some of us it's chaotic. There are some in the in the in the first responder field, in the hospitals, in the doctor's offices, in the areas in which this has been nothing short of hell in some respects. We pray for you. We thank you for diligently getting up and going into the storm, going in to where it is most dangerous and then having to come home. I cannot imagine what that might look like. For the rest of us, we're hunkered down. So we have two sets of people, some who are in the midst of the storm. What can we do for them? We can pray for them. 
We can pray that they get what they need to be able to take care of this, but we can also pray that in the time as such as this, they would be protected and they would know that in their minds they can wear the helmet of salvation, which is our hope. That the Kedge anchor can draw us closer to Jesus. And for those of us who are resetting, I have to be honest, in the last week, I don't know how much of resetting I did. I think I was a little bit unnerved by all this myself. Only because it almost didn't feel real. I don't know about you. Did it feel real for you? Because for me, it didn't. When I got up and I ate, it felt like the world was a normal place. And then you turn on the news and you realize it's not so normal. Now, I did in the past pray that my kids wouldn't have to wake up for school because I didn't want to wake up at 5.30 in the morning. And I'm like, wow, God, I got my wish, but I didn't want it this way. But I understand something. God in the midst of all this is not surprised by any of this. What he's saying is the anxiety that we are feeling and the fear that we know is because our minds are fixated on that which we are powerless over. And when we feel powerless, we get anxiety and it causes us pain and distress. But if we take that which we are fixing on, the, the worry and the fear and the anxiety of what might be when this is all over, and we face to Jesus, we turn from our anxieties, and we can believe that the hope that is found in him is real and trustworthy. His promises are true, and his promise is this. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never turn his back from us, and he has not turned his back from us. This virus was not given to us from God. This virus is a result of a world that is broken, that God is consecrating to himself. This virus is something that we can't see, the invisible, much like the spiritual. You see, sometimes we come against people, and even in this time, you see a division for those who are, who are really cautious and those who aren't so cautious, those from each side of the political spectrum. There's already a division, and God is saying, can't you see? You don't see the invisible, but you know that it is attacking you. This virus is invisible, but we know that it is attacking the human race. It is much like Satan himself. Satan is invisible, but he is attacking the human race. He is looking to destroy us. But make no mistake, we can anchor ourselves in the love of Jesus Christ. And in the love of Christ, as Rocky says to the Russian people at the end of his fight, he turns to them, he says, change is possible, I hated you once, you hated me. But somehow, through the power of the underdog coming and becoming victorious, much like ourselves, some of us were underdogs, rejected, not accepted anywhere in life. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. You felt rejected and not accepted. And God is saying, though you felt like you were not a part of, I have made you a part of. And what I have made you a part of is the hope that is found in no one else but Jesus and his blood and his righteousness. So understand, if we stand firm on the anchor that is Christ, if we take the kedging and allow ourselves to be drawn into him, Oh, can you imagine what the world will look like next week, the week after that, or the week after that? This is a message of hope because I know something. God is saying we're going to get through this. But it's not just meant to be endured. It's not just meant to be survived. It's meant to do something to us individually and as a church. See, here at the Stroudsburg Wesleyan Church, we're already mobilized. We're giving away food Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're figuring out new ways in which we can be the hands and feet of Jesus while keeping our social distancing. Though someone told me social distancing is not the same thing as social disengaging. Engage with people in new ways, in new opportunities. The beauty about this is maybe now the Strasburg Wesleyan Church will have a bigger footprint on the virtual world, which is not something that we have desired or had done very well. And God brings people in our path. They brought Pastor Ariel here who has an opportunity to do such things. So we are moving forward. God is using a crisis to bring out his cross. That's what God does. He didn't cause the crisis, nor did he desire the crisis. But the crisis we are in by our own makings will allow for God to do something in the midst of the crisis. If we don't blame each other, we can then point the finger at the one who will see us through this. In Philippians it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again. Rejoice, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your gentleness, that means now speak kind words. Let's not fight over toilet paper anymore. Let us share the wealth. If you've got toilet paper, share it with someone who doesn't have toilet paper. If you've got food, share it with someone who doesn't have food. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, it speaks of no one being in need. I don't know what the world looks like tomorrow. 
and no one could have imagined the world looking like it does today. So most of our worries and cares and concerns are taken away in a blink of an eye. But I can tell you this, the one who loves us has never left us. The one who loves us desires for us to use the kedge anchor and be drawn into him. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our hope is is in no one else but Jesus. It's not optimistic. It doesn't believe everything will work out. What it does believe is that Jesus is working out everything for the good of those who love God and will call according to his purpose. And God loves everyone and desires for everyone to know that love, that we might love one another. That doesn't change in the midst of a crisis. Actually, that becomes our calling card. That becomes our power. That becomes our strength. Because perfect love casts out all fear. The perfect love of God for us and our perfect love for each other will cast out the fear because we stop thinking about ourselves and we start thinking about another. And that is a desire. Our desire is that we wouldn't think so much about me or this church, but we would think about the world and how this is causing the brokenness to come to the top. Understanding that no matter what we do, we can't control everything. But understand this, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious. We might get knocked down, but we're getting up again. Amen? We might get knocked down. Even today might be the day which you got knocked down. But understand this, God is bringing you up again. He's filling you right now with the power of his spirit that you might be empowered to speak life into your family. You have an opportunity to speak life into your family right now. You have an opportunity to know the encouragement that is found in no one else but Jesus and then to give that encouragement, contagious as it is, as contagious as the coronavirus is the contagion of God's love one for another. Let us fight the contagion of the coronavirus with the love of God because it's the love of God that will sustain us. And he says... Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Understand all we got to do is hold on to the anchor, to be pulled into the presence of the Holy of Holies. And then allow for that Holy of Holies to work in us and through us, drawing others at a time such as this. Make no mistake, as they keep saying on the news, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Here's what I'm going to say. In the midst of it getting worse, in the midst of the darkness, the light becomes greater. They need the light of hope. If you put a whole bunch of rats in a box... The rats will die quicker if they have no light. But if you give them a little bit of light, they will live longer. And what we are trying to do is for those of us whose spirits have been deadened, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, we are all on a journey with Jesus. And what God is saying is let that light permeate you. First, let the light of love come into you. If you've never done that, today is a day to say, Jesus, I am anxiety ridden. I am in pain. I don't know what to do. I can't stop the delusions in my own mind, the despair, the cloud. And Jesus is saying, I've got the answer for you. Just come to me and I'll give it to you. Just come to me and receive that which I have already done on the cross. You know, my, my son is doing cut go. And one of the things about Cucko, they do a, a, a great illustration. Linda, can you bring that up to me quickly? And, and the illustration's a beautiful thing because just bring that one knife. Yep, that one. For those of you who've never had a Cucko demonstration, it's a very interesting thing because the Cucko knife is a very sharp knife and it'll actually cut your finger if, you don't, if, you, if you're not careful. Is, is, she, is it in the screen, Ariel? Move in. So, hold it tight. No. Yeah, I'm not going to cut your hand, I promise. So it just comes right through the leather. It just cuts it. What Jesus is saying is right now, I want to cut to the point of the matter. I want you to know my love for you. 
Allow for him to divide. Allow him to open up your heart that you might receive that love. And I promise you with that love, you will have a new perspective. A perspective filled with his peace. A perspective filled with his understanding and with his grace and his mercy. Where anxiety will no longer be a part of you. Fear will no longer have a hold on you. You will no longer be a slave to fear. Because you will be a child of God. God loves his children and he loves us. And for those of you who have gone cold... There's a beautiful understanding in the word and it talks about his word and it talks about what that looks like. And and he says to us that his word is like a two-edged sword. Jesus is cutting out the things that are not necessary right now in our lives. What are we going to hold on to and what are we going to let go of? I'm going to make you a promise. If you do as they did in the old tradition of some churches, If you hold your hands out like this, hold your hands out. I can see you. No, you're not doing it yet. I know you're going. I'm not doing this in my house. No, 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 do it. Seriously. Oh, I see one person in the audience do it. Thank you, Pastor Linda. All right, so what he's saying is, are you willing to let go of all the things that you thought were your security, your money, your power, your wealth, your family, your intellect, your ability to move, your inability to move, whatever it is that you thought you derived power from, God is saying, let it go, and when you let it go, It gives you the opportunity to turn it upside down. And when you turn it upside down, you can now receive the fullness of who he is. Maybe this is a time not just to reset in our minds, but to reset in our lives and to focus on that which is most important. And that is the hope that is found in no one else but Jesus. So today, if you allow Jesus to become your hope, I will promise you that tomorrow it will feel like a new day. It will be a new day. You will experience the newness of the new creation that is found in Christ, whether you've been in him or whether this is your first time of believing that the cross and the blood that was shed Gives us forgiveness and mercy and grace. Removal of shame and guilt. And that his resurrection gives us the power over sin itself. The thing that keeps us bound up. Which right now seems to be mostly the fear and anxiety. And the anger and the hatred and the blame game. And then the beauty of the spirit which dwells in us. That allows us to live this life fully empowered by the fullness of God. The Christ in us. The hope of glory. We as the church are the hope of glory. And for those of you who are not yet certain and you're un- unsafe, reach out for somebody. Reach out for us. Email us. Facebook us. Call us. Do what you need to do to reach out. We want you to know we are here for you. And we love you. And we desire that you would know that there is one who loves you more than even us at this moment. More than your own fears. More than your own regrets. More than your own remorse. More than your own guilt. This is a time of resetting. Let us reset by understanding the veil was torn. The holy of holy was was set free onto the world through Jesus Christ. And he is the forerunner. He is the maverick. He is the firstborn of all creation bringing all creation onto himself. And that includes me, and that includes you. And the beauty here is that he loves us, and his love for us will allow for us to no longer feel the anxiety and fear so that we might be empowered to love one another. May we love one another at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that is found in you. We thank you in the midst of this turmoil. There are some who have not yet fully understood the message of Jesus. May your message that salvation is not merely heading to heaven, but that your message is that we can bring a piece of the kingdom of God here to earth. May this be a time in which your people, the kingdom of God would go forth in such a way that your power and your glory and your love would be seen throughout the kingdom and throughout the world. May this be a time when the church shines like never before in history. May we be empowered by your mercy and your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish with a final song.
platform my, my heart got a little heavy and I, I just want to share with each and every person who is out there that God is looking for us to take our brokenness and give it to him and we miss you it is probably the most difficult season to be here with no one on a Sunday morning and understand this you are loved by your church family and if you don't have a church we ask that during this time you would make our church your church family let us help you get through this difficult time it is brokenness that brings us to the fullness of his greatness may you know his greatness by trading your sorrow by trading your pain by trading your anxieties for his perfect peace for his love and for the hope that is found in jesus anchor your souls right now and go forth and be victorious become the overcomer that god has called you to be in the name of jesus christ and his peace and his presence